in an instant. My name is Ben, and today we are going to talk about Polaroid Instant 35mm film. I'm recording this episode from inside the Zion Park Motel, which is a beautiful little spot right outside Zion National Park, where I have been shooting this lovely film that is very near and dear to my heart, but we'll get into all that in a second. First, there's an intro to roll. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Well, I've been putting off making this video for a little bit because I really friggin' love this film. And it's not been made since 2002, and to shoot an episode meant I had to shoot more of my precious stock. But for this occasion, being out here in these incredible national parks, that's a good enough excuse to use it. This is Polaroid 35mm instant film. It came in black and white Pola pan, it came in Pola chrome, a color version. There was an oscilloscope version of the film, which was rated at 10,000 ASA. Polograph at 400 ASA. There's something called Pola Blue, which is a high contrast film that produces a blue and white negative of an ASA of like six. And we'll get into all of those uses momentarily, but the most important thing to note about this film is that it's absolutely nutso futso insane. Essentially, you shoot a roll in a traditional 35 millimeter camera, and then you take that film and run it through a processor like the one sitting next to me right here. Uh, you take a separate chemical cube that snaps in there, and the processor takes a backing layer with chemistry and sandwiches it with the film transparency. It basically creates one long strip of peel apart film, which the machine then unwinds or peels open creating a clean slide of black and white or color film with the excess chemistry scraped off. <sighs> like I said, not so. Um, this film looks very different than other Polaroid products, but it very much is Polaroid through and through. It's quite unlike traditional 35 millimeter film and its very existence harkens back to the days where Polaroid would get a bunch of geniuses in a room and be like, hey, can you do something nuts? Like fit 36 Polaroids on a roll? And they were like, yes, we're all geniuses. We can pretty much do anything. Are you, sure th are you sure this is what you want us to do? Well, this invention actually came in the wake of Polaroid's biggest slip and fall, the failed Polavision instant motion picture system, which irreparably damaged the company, and you can watch the video on that. But despite the product's failure, the underlying technology was very galaxy brain, and much of that science was recycled to make Polaroid 35 millimeter film possible. Both Polavision motion picture stock and Polachrome are 40 ASA, uh, they use the additive color method and have a very similar low contrast muted look. Now, these slide films weren't necessarily intended for general photographic use. This is the kind of invention that was made as a result of people's need to see stuff right away. Uh, uses that we just don't think of anymore because we have digital cameras. Polaroid film had many industrial purposes, and this film is a great example of that sort of product. If you needed to go to a construction site and shoot a bunch of photos that needed to be presented right away, you might shoot with Polapan. Uh, if you needed to duplicate charts and expose slides that you could present at a meeting, you might use Polychrome. There's literally even a chart on the packaging. <laughs> These sorts of strange uses led to oddball products like the Polaroid freeze frame recorder, which printed single slides of video onto either Polapan or Polychrome, or the Pro Palette 7000, which exported image files from your desktop computer onto slide film you load into it. They even made that product compatible with other non-instant slide films, and it was actually a really powerful product. It could expose 8K images onto the slides. This was the 90s. I'm talking 8K out here. So after these sorts of weird uses for Polaroid began evaporating with digital cameras now in the mix, these awesome films were no longer really useful to people and were discontinued in 2002, shortly after Polaroid started having some like really major problems overall. Even so, some artists hoarded the film and because of its large chemical packets, a lot of it still survives today despite being expired for over 20 years. And I absolutely love the results you can get with this film. Uh, I've shot quite a lot of the Polapan stuff over the last couple years. It has the tonality of traditional Polapan black and white you'd see in pack films, which we know and love. It's really strange getting 36 Polaroids in one roll and seeing how this chemistry looks through the optics of an SLR camera with a traditional glass lens. It's just gorgeous stuff. It's a moray for sure. As much as I love this film, uh, it is extremely delicate and kind of hard to handle, especially now that it's older, it's even more brittle, and it was always brittle, 
But these days the film doesn't cleanly separate so well from its backing layer in the processor. So you have to rinse it. And there's a lot of points at which scratches and whoopsies can happen. It results in a positive that can sometimes look pretty rough and messy, but that grungy look is something I love getting out of it and it keeps it very Polaroid-y instead of looking like a perfect slide you could have shot with any 35 millimeter film. Now I throw it all the way back across the country to Brooklyn, New York, where we shot and processed some rare Polychrome and Pola Blue film with fellow analog sickos Nick Collingwood and Forrest Burke. Okay, so we just shot some Pola Blue, 12 frames of that, a 36 frame roll of Polychrome. We did it with the Forrest Burke and the Nick Collingwood, Hollywood, New York, and D. Forrest Borkner. So what we're doing here is we're gonna put this in the processor. So essentially this is, think of this like the back of Peel Apart film. Um, this is going to spread the black backing onto the film, the transparent film, and with that comes chemicals. And this processor basically rolls it up, sort of like sandwiching up pack film, and then it lets it sit for a second, like you would once you process pack film. And then it literally peels it open in here, peels it up, back up, and rewinds. Um, this processor, thanks to the good Lord Edwin Land, jams every time, which we actually like because it allows the film to process longer. And then we're gonna manually peel this apart. So we're gonna go ahead and load this now. Um, we are we are really hoping we got our shots here. We took some fire photos. And then we've got our 36 frame roll, which goes into this area. It's really foolproof, but we are a bunch of fools, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh my God. So this comes here. Okay, so now we've latched the, uh, the roll of film and the processing pack together, and this processor will crack the chemical pods in here, wind it all up, and then eventually we'll peel, peel it apart manually. We've got it set to 36 shots. We've got it set to four minutes of processing time, which doesn't really matter, but once I close this, it's gonna crack this. Let's do it. Four minutes has passed. Our film suggests successfully jammed in here, which is what we wanted. Perfect. I believe I can see an image already. And it smells crazy. I, I don't envy myself. Okay, we we'll take our backing layer off. And, yep, okay, now we need to rinse because it basically still leaves like black residue on the backing that we need to rinse off. Once it starts like separating, it'll come off really quickly. There it is, there it is. Oh, oh my yeah. god, these shots are sick. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, is this it, is the blue. Is, this is, no, no, no. This is no, the no. chrome, this is the chrome. Oh, this is the chrome, maybe it's just because we're looking at it from the back. Yeah, she looks weird from the back. So our Polychrome stuff on that bop really looked great. It's pretty astounding to see Polaroid film that old produce results that good. Whether it's pack film or Polychrome, it always feels like a miracle when that happens. And we had a great time reviewing the slides. And I think I may have even hooked Nick a little bit onto this stuff, which is, well, it's always great getting addicted to something that hasn't been made since 2002. All right, let's see how the blue came out. Let's see. It's not looking so that Gucci. Is not, not looking very Gucci I mean, at there's all. There's some spread, but that's, um, that's not looking. Good. It is definitely a good thing that we did the yeah. 36 that, exposure the roll. Slide first. Is looking much better. Yeah, this isn't nothing. looking too hot. That's enough. Tony, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. As you saw, the way we processed that film was with the Polaroid 35 millimeter power processor. This is the automated version of this device which you plug in and it winds the film with the chemistry for you. Most people use the manual hand crank version, which gives me a freaking heart attack every time I've used it. It's plasticky, it's jittery, and this film is so delicate that it's liable to snap midway through the winding, which has happened to me, so I don't use it anymore. Uh, the benefit of the manual processor is that you can essentially push the film. With it being so expired, you want it to sit wound up for longer than you might have when it was fresh. It's like letting pack film sit a little bit longer in the chemistry before peeling it. But thanks to my busted auto processor not rewinding correctly, I can do that just fine. It's a real catch. 
This is one of those inventions Polaroid drummed up that always seems to blow people away. Uh, honestly, I think it's a product that could be really cool today. With analog stuff being at the height of its resurgence and people wanting to handle their craft physically, this is such a fun product that is relatively easy to use and would be pretty easy to market. I could see these kits flying off the shelves at Urban Outfitters and people going absolutely dummy viral on Instagram Reels showing the world their instant 35 millimeter film they process themselves, but does anybody have the room full of scientific geniuses Polaroid once did at the height of its company? I don't know, I mean, everyone seems really nice and cool, but the resources just don't seem to be there to revitalize such a wild product. So once again, we say rest in peace and peace, RIP in P. Well, thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and run that subscribe button through the auto processor. Stay tuned for more breakdowns, reviews, shoots, and all things instant. Bye.